Things are heating up. Hot on the heels of Luma's Dream Machine update, Vidyu has released their 2.0 model. I do think that Vidyu has a bit of a sleeper hit on their hands. You're definitely gonna wanna check this out. I've also got a big, dare I say, game changer for AI character motion control. Speaking of which, you know, if TikTok gets banned, what's gonna happen to all of our reference material for AI dancing TikTok girls? I'm sure we'll figure something out. In the meantime, let's go check out Vidyu. So if you're not aware, Vidyu has been kicking around for kind of a while. In fact, they were the first model to appear after Sora made its initial splash. The difference, of course, being that Vidyu actually did release. Uh, I do have some Sora stuff. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But in the meantime, Vidyu's 2.0 model has been released. And I mean, like, released to everyone. This isn't in beta. Uh, you can go there right now and start generating on it. And overall, I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with the model. They've brought together a few things. Uh, granted, nothing we haven't already seen before, but it all just kind of seems to work pretty well. So just quickly going over the UI and our options here. Uh, obviously, we have the Vidu 2.0 model here. Uh, you can also still generate in 1.5 or 1.0, but obviously we will be focusing on the 2.0. Now we have options for reference to video, which we are gonna take a look at in a little bit, image to video, and interestingly, uh, we do not have text to video. So if you try to generate text to video, it'll actually kick back to the 1.5 version. It's a little on the ironic side, considering that yesterday we took a look at Luma's Ray 2, and that only does text to video. So it's like between the two of them, you've pretty much got a state-of-the-art model. That said, I know that most of you prefer image to video anyhow, and uh, video does deliver on that front. We also have first frame, last frame, a section for our text prompts, uh, durations at four seconds or eight seconds, and the resolution either at 720 or 1080. Now there is a bit of a trick here in that you can only generate 1080 at four seconds, uh, but you can generate eight seconds at 720. Amplitude controls how much motion you're going to get within your frame. Uh, large, obviously you're going to be getting a lot of motion. Although that said, you begin running the risk of decoherence. Um, you can also leave it on auto if you want to. Kicking off with, I guess we'll call this easy mode. Uh, this is a mid-journey generated image of a woman standing in the middle of the street. I think we're catching her at just the moment that she realizes that she left the iron on at home. So just left on auto and running for eight seconds. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty decent shot. I mean, I didn't ask for very much here, so obviously we're not getting a ton of action here. A couple of things to note that impressed me. Uh, we have this like yellow cab here, and as it passes and like occludes through her, it actually you know remains the same cab on the way out. Same goes for this SUV that drives past um, as it passes through her. Yeah, uh, still remains the same SUV. Checking in on our man in the blue business suit, as we saw in yesterday's Luma video, uh, he was having some issues with a tiger. Well, moving over to Vidyu land, I guess problem solved. He now has this nice tiger scarf, and admittedly he does look like a lot more jacked, but I guess that's probably from drinking all that tiger blood. Overall, I do think that this is a pretty good output. Uh, the walk cycle in particular looks pretty good, and we do have like some slight variation on camera angle, and you know, the character's face remains consistent. Kicking that same image and prompt down to medium in terms of uh, the amplitude gives us this shot, which I, I kind of feel is definitely much more in line with like, you know, old school AI video, um, you know, some slight parallaxing, a little bit of movement on the character. So yeah, I mean, every once in a while, you're going to need a slower shot like that. So medium and small definitely work for that. Another quick test, this time bashing Luma's Ray 2 into Vidyu. Um, this was our cyberpunk woman with white hair. Uh, she seemed to be very popular. We used her for yesterday's thumbnail, in fact. So this is just a screenshot from that Ray output, but then running it into Vidyu, we get this. So kind of interesting differences between the two models. I mean, granted, one is text to video and the other is image to video. Now on the Vidyu side, I will note that we do get a little bit of a smudgy face here in the last few frames. It's really not that big a deal. You could probably cut it like right about here and be fine. The other thing that I know that everybody's keeping a really close eye on is the fact that her tattoo here uh, remains consistent throughout and and, you know, the background graffiti all stays consistent as well. I mean, those I know that those are the two things that you guys are really honing in on. 
Another quick motion test. This is, of course, a wizard who is pondering his orb. So left on auto with a prompt about uh, zooming in on the orb and having it glow with magical energy gives us this, which isn't bad. I might have some qualms with the, you know, overall aesthetics of the mystical energy. But, you know, at the same time, I guess stylistically it fits, uh, you know, the scene itself. Kind of looks a little bit more like a snow globe, but you know, uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, but as we can see, we did not get that like zoom in. But writing that again on the large or high movement scale, uh, we ended up with this, which at first I was like, well, you're zooming back, not zooming in. And then, yeah, it does this. Uh, so yeah, it definitely listened. The model also does a pretty good job of like understanding location and expanding upon it, considering that like, you know, uh, none of this information was in that initial shot. Now, granted, he is in like some like underground druid layer, so it's not like the most challenging thing. But I definitely think that all of us have run into that situation in a shot like this, where suddenly there's like a Starbucks kiosk over here. We'll talk about prompting in just a minute, but I, I did want to quickly point out that, um, you know, by using first frame, last frame, you, especially you can go pretty minimal in terms of prompt. So uh, if, you know, if you're working on something, you just hit this recreate button and um, it'll automatically, you know, uh, repopulate for you. And in this, I just ended up using like man raises gun. And of course, in an action like this, uh, you can actually just swap the image order here and uh, we'll change this to man lowers gun. And I'm pretty sure we just saved a life. And if you're curious as to how I pulled those two images off, uh, the initial image was generated in mid journey. I just took it over to the editor, blocked this out and gave it the prompt of no gun. Now, granted, old Midge took that prompt and said, no gun, you mean you want a different gun? Or do you want a katana instead? Amusingly, I also got a moderation flag for trying to remove the gun, which I thought was pretty funny. But after a little more playing around, we eventually did get our last frame or our first frame. It all depends on you, Mr. Editor. First frame, last frame in terms of actions and transitions, of course, does have its limitations. Uh, one shot that I've been trying forever is to take, you know, our wizard with the orb, have the camera zoom into the orb and then transition into a different location. To vid use credit, I think it gets close. It definitely understands the assignment. It just can't quite get over over that finish line. The model does seem to do pretty well with these like kind of crowd scenes. I haven't seen a lot of backwards walking. Um, now I will say that you get a little bit of like decoherence and blurriness on the faces at certain points, but actually I do have a, a weird kit bash fix for that that we'll take a look at in just a little bit. Now, obviously there are limits as to how far you can take background crowds. Um, but you know, I gotta say even in this shot, it's, it's not that bad. They're a little bit on the mushy side, but still, I mean, that's a lot of people. Again, we're gonna take a look at spicing this up in just a little bit, and I think the results are really going to surprise you. Video 2.0 does seem to handle animation and like anime styles uh, pretty well. For example, here, like I know there's not a ton going on here, but the fact is that the character is staying consistent to style and not like morphing into photorealism. Another example here, we're getting some, you know, light character movement and some camera movement. Everything is staying stylistically consistent. So that got me thinking about a project that I've had on the back burner for a while, merging my love of, you know, like 90s era Don Bluth animated films like An American Tale or All Dogs Go to Heaven with the zombie films of George Romero. So I present to you Paws of the Dead. The idea, of course, being that we're seeing the zombie apocalypse through the ideas of a pack of lovable stray neighborhood dogs who are led by a disgraced former police dog who harbors a dark secret. So testing it out in video, yeah, I mean, the animation style all seems to pretty much hold up. It'll definitely take some creative cutting here and there to get rid of, you know, some of the little inconsistencies. But for the most part, I mean, that's pretty good. The problem that I ran into is when I started generating up the zombies, I think there's just like too much happening for the model to really be able to grab a hold of. That said, I did get pretty close to a solution. And we're going to talk about that in one second. But first, I wanted to circle back to prompting. You know, one really good hack for writing effective image and video prompts is to use ChatGPT. A lot of you have tried my prompting GPTs for Kling, Minimax, and Runway, and you've gotten some great results out of them, and I'm always happy to share them. They do take a little bit to put together. It is definitely not impossible, but you do need a little bit of an understanding as to what to ask ChatGPT for. 
of course, every job is different. So, you know, obviously my video generator GPT might not be relevant for your particular work situation. And that is where HubSpot's free resource, Five Essential Resources for ChatGPT at Work, comes into play. If you're looking to level up your workday, get more done, and have ChatGPT do more of the heavy lifting, it is designed to supercharge your day. It's packed with a lot of things, including a really handy template on setting clear guidelines with ChatGPT to an AI-generated content refinement checklist that will help ensure accuracy and brand alignment. And there's a lot more as well. Let's face it, 2025 is going to be an even bigger year for AI in the workplace, especially with new ChatGPT capabilities popping up all the time. I mean, OpenAI just added tasks. Well, the good folks at HubSpot have you covered with my favorite part, the Supercharge Your Workday with ChatGPT PDF. This includes a section on what's new in 2025, which brings you up to speed on all the latest ChatGPT developments. So you can kick off the year without feeling left behind. And don't miss the 100 plus ChatGPT prompts. This is filled with practical prompts that might not have occurred to you to try out. This whole resource was put together by HubSpot, and I'd like to thank them for sponsoring today's video. Okay, circling back to pause of the dead and our zombie decoherence problem. And I don't want to necessarily hype this up as a, you know, total solution for this, but I do want to illustrate that I, we're getting kind of close. So video 2.0 does have a uh, reference to video. It's it, kind of like the thing that Pika has now with the ingredients. So we can feed it three different references along with a text prompt. And uh, by the way, the text prompt uh, that I have here is actually from my Minimax uh, GPT. So um, if you need a, you know, video 2 prompter, well, there it is. Now the downside to reference to video, at least currently, is that we are limited to four seconds. Um, resolution is in 720. You can't do 1080. Um, although you do have, you know, um, your, your movement amplitude here. Uh, and then obviously 69, 916, and 11. So, you know, taking three images of <coughs> our zombies and running that gives us this, which I will admit is it's still, it's not perfect, but it's definitely a lot better than, you know, our initial image to video results. But with some patience and some rerolls, you could end up with something like this. Now, granted, again, it is not perfect, but there is a lot of energy here. And again, it is a lot more stable than the initial image to video. Seeing those results did lead me down a bit of a rabbit hole with reference to video. So uh, I decided to keep testing it out with uh, like this mid journey generated character, along with uh, this kind of like fallout inspired diner scene. And writing the two of those together, I mean, that's that's pretty good. I mean, granted, there's not a whole lot of action going on in here. And again, we are limited to four seconds. But yeah, that's pretty impressive. Another interesting output here where I prompted for the camera to rotate just so that we could see more of the 3D environment. Uh, an interesting bit of decoherence here. Um, if you notice, like right about here, that background just kind of like, I don't know, sort of like disintegrates out. Uh, that does lead me to kind of think that there might be a little bit of like point diffusion uh, 3D modeling that's happening here. Uh, we took a look at that a few videos back. I'll have a link to that in the description down below. For more, I mean, I guess like standard use case, uh, I decided to test out with an image of myself, um, an image of a you know giant rock arena. And uh, just because I wanted a, a fairly iconic guitar, I grabbed an image of uh, Eddie Van Halen's famous striped guitar and ran those all together. The result was actually fairly surprising. I mean, it did change the guitar on me. It definitely has more of like kind of a Les Paul feel than like Eddie Van Halen's Super Strat, but still like it definitely got the idea of what I was looking for because I do have the Van Halen racing stripes. And that got me wondering if we could kind of break things uh, since we have three reference inputs that we can put in. If I used, you know, my face, uh, this like cyberpunk character that we've used a couple of times now, definitely in a very animated style along with, uh, again, kind of more of an animated background. So blending the three of those together, and that resulted in an output like this, which 
I, I mean, that's pretty impressive. I mean, granted, it did make like AI me hit the gym for six months, but still, it definitely does work. I mean, there are some moments of decoherence in my face there, but it's nothing that a face swapper can't fix. So guess who forgot to cancel their subscription to Sora? You're welcome, Sam. So I decided to experiment around with some of our reference to video outputs from video and roll them into Sora's remix just to see what we would get. Inherently, it's still that same problem with Sora where stuff comes out looking very, very video gamey and like it's really hard to try to beat that out of Sora. Additionally, consistency is still a problem here. Although I will say, at least I can take a, you know, four second shot and using the recut feature, turn it into a 10 second shot. Is it a usable 10 second shot? I mean, I don't know about that. Granted, it isn't all bad. I mean, taking that shot of me playing guitar and bringing it into Sora for a subtle remix. Of course, Sora is going to change it so that it's no longer me. But, you know, we now have this 10 second shot of this dude playing guitar on stage. Um, it is more or less the same shot, just a lot longer. So I wouldn't call it reliable in the least. But every once in a while, man, you're going to get a remix that looks like this come out and I mean, that is really stellar. Overall, I'll have to say that Sora has definitely gotten a little bit better. I mean, not $200 a month better, but I do have it for at least another month. So, you know, I'll keep exploring with it. Thankfully, uh, OpenAI just released tasks. So I'm gonna have to have ChatGPT set a reminder for me to cancel it. Rounding out, I'm gonna call this one a waitlist alert. Uh, Kinetics Tech has a new platform uh, that is going to allow for character motion control for video diffusion models. So as I was joking around earlier, you know, if TikTok dancing girls disappear, what are we gonna do? Well, apparently we can just, you know, grab your phone camera and uh, do a dance yourself, I guess. Um, and then via the Kinetics platform, you can generate up uh, video of various characters doing that motion. Yeah, it looks pretty impressive. If you want to check out character motion control for video generation models, uh, there is a wait list um, that is linked down below. I will definitely keep an eye on this one and I will let you know as we hear more about it. So that is it for today. Alexa, remind me to cancel my Sora subscription in 29 days. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.